Hello friends, Dr. Ken Berry here. I wanted to go live today with a special guest uh, to help you understand just what you can do to help your friends and family if they suffer from type two diabetes. Uh, I, ha I have with me today, Mr. Dennis Pollock, who is a minister uh, and a Christian, and he started a YouTube channel because he has type two diabetes or had type two diabetes. Hey Holly, and he experimented at home and he figured out, uh, despite all the, the information and, and education he was given by mainstream medical science, he's figured out how to have a normal A1C and yet enjoy a delicious, nutritious diet full of hundreds of different foods. And I've been watching his YouTube channel for a while, and I want to use this time to help you understand that you don't have to be a doctor. You don't have to be a diabetic educator. You don't have to be any kind of a specialist. You don't have to have any initials behind your name to literally help your friends and family reverse type 2 diabetes. Uh, so don't wait for the American Diabetes Association to do this because they've had decades now and they're not doing a great job. But citizen scientists, citizen uh, activists like Dennis Pollock are changing the world one friend and one family member at a time. And I wanted to introduce you to this guy. He's uh, got a great YouTube channel. Here he is, Dennis Pollock. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you, Ken. Great to be with you. Man, it's a pleasure to have you on. We, we've been trying to make this happen for about, what, six months? We had all kinds of <laughs> things pop up, but we're finally here together. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Dennis Pollock, and he's not a doctor. And he's not a diabetic educator. He's not a nutritionist. He's not a dietitian. He is a minister. Dennis, tell us your story, what you do, where you're at, and how you came to be able to reverse your type 2 diabetes and then also help thousands of other people move in that direction. If you guys don't know, Dennis has a YouTube channel. It's called Beat Diabetes. And I'm going to put a link. I, I didn't put a link, but I will as soon as this live is done. So if you're watching this on the playlist, on the replay, his YouTube channel is down below. He has 192,000 subscribers on YouTube. I think that's more than the ADA has, Dennis. Tell us about yourself. <laughs> well, when I first started having uh, diabetic issues and blood sugar issues, uh, I had something that is not all that common. And I didn't even know at the time what it was. Uh, I found out later it was called hyperactive uh, hypoglycemia or hyperactive. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it was. Uh, basically, I was producing my own hypos uh, by eating high carb foods. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know what was going on. And one of my problems, although now I look back, I think it was a blessing. I didn't have hospitalization. I didn't have health insurance. I didn't have much money in those days. So I couldn't go to a top-notch endocrinologist and say, hey, doc, here's my issue. Uh, what do I do? What's going on? I did go to a couple of doctors. And at the time when all this was happening, I still had a relatively decent A1C. Uh, my fasting glucose wasn't terrible, but I was having these horrible uh, surges in blood sugar. And then uh, the, yeah, and that really wasn't all that bad, uh, but the, what really got me were, were the plunges, and it was dipping down. So I could I could jump up after a high carb meal to over 200 milligrams per deciliter in my glucose, and then would come that terrible plunge. And now I didn't know it for a while. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know the numbers. I didn't know how to test myself. I didn't know anything. All I knew was about. Uh, three to four hours after eating a high carb meal, I felt horrible and I felt like I was gonna pass out. And in fact, it, at one point I did pass out. I had many times where I was almost ready to pass out. And one time I was uh, in Walmart and uh, I, uh, I felt so bad that I had to go out in the car and just steady myself. My family was with me. And so I just went out in the car and just relaxed and tried to get grips on myself so I wouldn't pass out. Another time I was in church, I did pass out and uh, I tried to make it to the restroom, didn't quite get there. I slumped up against the wall, fell down, passed out. Next thing I woke up, there was a nurse that was holding me and they called for the med the paramedics. They tested my glucose and it read uh, the letters L-O, low. And you know what that means. It means I was dangerously low. 
Yep, that's very low. And so, it, Dennis, it's so common, and it's it's especially common in younger people before they develop type two diabetes to have exactly what you describe. They'll have these hypoglycemic episodes. They're not diabetic. They they don't if they are they don't know it. They don't know if they're pre diabetic. They're so young and healthy. They haven't really been to the doctor, right? But the, all they know is about an hour or two after they eat, depending on the meal, they'll get lightheaded, they'll get sweaty, they'll get nauseous, sometimes they'll pass out, and they go see their doctor. And very, very often the advice from their doctor is, oh, you're having hypoglycemia, you need to eat some carbohydrates every two hours, and that'll help keep your blood sugar up. And the doctor is right about what that's going to do, but he's wrong about the advice. Because exactly. if you do that, then you're guaranteed you're going to become type 2 diabetic because what's happening behind the scenes is when you eat that high-carb meal, your blood sugar shoots up like you've seen. It goes, it goes up high, 150, 175, 200. Immediately, your pancreas, which is still making lots of insulin, right. secretes too much insulin, and all of a sudden, your blood sugar crashes about an hour, two hours after the meal. And you go see a doctor, and instead of them saying, hey, you need to cut the carbohydrates out, you need to eat low carb or you're going to become a type two diabetic. They say, oh, you need to eat, you know, three meals a day with a snack in between. So six meals a day, all of them need to contain some, some fast carbohydrates so that you don't have these blood sugar lows. It's such terrible advice. Tell people where you're at, Dennis, and everybody watching, tell me where you're watching from, what city, what state, where are you at, Dennis, in the world and what do you do? Well, I am in uh, North Dallas or North of Dallas, I should say, in a suburb north of Dallas. And in terms of what I do, uh, well, I do uh, Christian ministry work. However, I'm sort of semi-retired in the sense that uh, the, the diabetes thing became a tiger. Once I, once I started the YouTube channel, I, I started it. I didn't know anything about YouTube. Somebody told me I ought to be on YouTube. I just was playing around, posting things once in a while. And when it began to take off, I started taking it more seriously. And next thing you know, I got sucked into the whole deal. And now I'm making like two YouTube videos a week plus one Bible teaching video a week. So it, it is just, of course, uh, with, with COVID and everything, I haven't gone out so much anyway. But uh, it's taken a lot of time. But that's, uh, I never planned, Ken, on being a diabetes educator. I never planned on really trying to do any of that. But it's kind of funny how we get moved in certain directions. And people seem to appreciate what I shared and I've learned a lot myself. When I first started out with the, the YouTube channel, I was actually at a pre-diabetic range of about 5.8. And I was pretty proud. I thought, okay, I'm under six. I'm doing pretty good. And then I started getting testimonies from people who were taking my advice. And yeah, I'm down to 5.0, 4.9, 4.8. And I'm like, wow, they're doing better than me. And I better get off the ball. So uh, I've lowered mine uh, somewhat. And I'm down into the low fives now. But anyway, yeah, the, the uh, diabetes thing and the YouTube channel has really taken up a lot of my time. But I still make it to Africa here and there and uh, do a lot of Bible teaching through the Internet as well. Ah, beautiful. I absolutely love your YouTube channel. And you and I are both blessed in much the same way. We both are blessed with beautiful, intelligent wives. <laughs> uh, but I want I want to I want to play devil's advocate here for a second. You're not a doctor. You're not a diabetic educator. You're not a dietitian or a nutritionist. What gives right. you the gall? What gives <laughs> you the temerity? Why do you think you have a right to make YouTube videos that have helped 192,000 people? And I mean, you understand what I'm saying? How, how do you think do. you have any right to do such a thing? Right. Well, one of the points that I make is I'm not trying to tell people necessarily, here's what you must do. I'm saying this has worked for me. It has worked well for me. You know, Ken, when I first uh, started having these ups and downs and these terrible uh, blood sugar spikes and plunges, uh, I didn't know. I didn't have a clue. And I was not at all biased. I would have gone any direction that would have worked for me. I was not... Uh, anti-vegan. I was not anti-vegetarian. I was not anti-carnivore. I, I just wanted something that would work. And I read somebody that said, hey, go ve uh, go vegetarian, cut out all the meat and you'll solve your problems. So I tried that and uh, lo and behold, it got 10 times worse. And oh, that I, didn't work for you, did it? It did not work at all. I was bouncing mm -hmm. all over the place. So I mean, just from a practical point of view, you know, I'm I'm not maybe the brightest bulb in the pack, but at least I can figure out when something's not working, it's not working. Yep. And uh, it's very common. Uh, most doctors now have jumped on the plant-based train 
And there are many doctors on YouTube and other places who will absolutely tell people you need to cut all the saturated fat out of your diet, get rid of all the red meat, and you'll fix your diabetes. And that's just not true. Uh, right now, we've got people watching from South Africa, Australia, the UK, New Zealand, and uh, the EU who are hungry for this information. And I think that's why your YouTube channel, channel blew up like it did is because people are hungry for something that works. Because indeed, if you start as a type 2 diabetic and you go plant-based, you eat a raw vegan diet, you might decrease your A1C a little bit. That, that is true. There's some research that shows that because it's so it's so void of nutrients that your body can't get enough sugar out of the vegetables, especially if they're raw, to even get your blood sugar to elevate, right? But if you want to reverse your type 2 diabetes, if you want to have an A1C in the low fives, like Dennis, meat and eggs have to be part of your diet. And I, Dennis, I've started calling it the proper human diet because when you start eating this way, very low carb, full of fatty meat and eggs, uh, nutrient dense. Every bite has meaningful nutrition in it. Not only do you reverse type 2 diabetes, but you reverse a lot of other me chronic medical complications as well. And I I'm getting comment after comment that people have discovered your channel and love the message that you give. Now, I know that you're not shy. You're a minister of the gospel. So I know you yeah. got over that shyness a few years back. But there are so many people who reach out to me uh, last night, Nisha and I, we do a, a YouTube live every Monday night at 7 p.m. And somebody said, when I'm in the grocery store and I see somebody with a cart full of just pure carbohydrate junk, and they're obviously obese and they're probably type 2 diabetic, I want so bad to reach out to them and say, hey, you are literally killing yourself with slow poison. You're, you're literally inducing type 2 diabetes and obesity and Nisha and I didn't really have an answer because we don't want people running around like crazy people in, in Walmart and Sam's Club saying, hey, put those Oreos back. They're going to give you a type 2 diabetes. But right, at the right. same time, you have found an outlet through YouTube. But there are so many other people whose message is just as strong as mine, just as meaningful as yours. But they're afraid to speak up. They're afraid like, I don't know. Well, I don't have a degree. Nobody's going to listen to me. You know, I'm, I'm just a guy. I'm just a mechanic. I'm just a hairdresser. I'm just a whatever and I tell people every day when you, number one, fix your own health like you did, fix it, lead by example, then people will start to ask you and then you can start to reach out with, with confidence and say, hey, there's another way. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to suffer all the disastrous consequences that come from being an uncontrolled type 2 diabetic. You can prevent all that and you can actually reverse your type 2 diabetes Give the listeners, we've got uh, almost a thousand people watching right now. Everybody wants to know how can they help their friends? How can they help their neighbors, people they care about without proselytizing and evangelizing and sounding like a kook? How can they do that? Well, well I, think I think one of the most powerful things you can do is to demonstrate or encourage them to demonstrate what food does to you with a glucometer. I, I affectionately call my glucometer Mike the meter. And one of the things that I think has made me uh, as successful as I have been is to just just demonstrate. One, one of the videos I've done that has been seen by almost a million people has to do with a test I did where I ate two candy bars and I ate two bananas, and my point was uh, that I didn't think there would be much difference. I tried to match them up to where uh, a banana, a fairly large banana is about 28 grams of carbs per banana. Uh, these candy bars were 28 grams, so according to my theory, uh, they should pretty much raise my blood sugar equally. I was surprised, and if you watch that video, you'll see me looking kind of confused because the bananas actually raised it higher than the candy bars. And people yep. got so mad at me. Some of them, a lot of them got their eyes open, but some of them got really ticked off yep. and accused me of working for the Hershey's candy company and all kinds of things. But anyway, when that glucometer is not going to lie. And guess what? That glucometer is not biased in any way. It, it's not a vegan glucometer. It's not a carnivore glucometer. It's not a paleo glucometer. It is just a glucometer. It's a little yeah. tiny machine. And it'll tell you what it'll tell you what's going on right now with your glucose, and that's the thing that opened it up for me. I mean, I read some books, I read Bernstein, and I read some some uh, some pretty solid guys, 
But the, the thing that really confirmed it was my glucometer seemed to be saying the exact same thing that Bernstein was saying, that the carbs basically are going to drive blood sugar crazy. And I found it over and over and over and over again until finally I realized the only smart thing to do is just cool those carbs. And lo and behold, once I started cutting down on the carbs, I didn't get those big highs. I didn't get those big lows. Everything just evened out. And I was one happy guy. And because I have a background in writing, I thought, well, you know, I'm just going to write a book about this. And I did it's called Overcoming Runaway Blood Sugar. And it sold like 100,000 copies. And uh, I wrote a second one. And it sold more still, about a quarter of a million or more. And so uh, people responded. And they do respond when I sh I think there's a couple of things that I do, and but one of the probably the biggest one is just show them what happens to me, and my wife will w join in with me, and we'll test ourselves before and after, and lo and behold, you you find out in a hurry what raises blood sugar and what doesn't. Absolutely, and I'll tell you three things that will get people ticked off at you very quickly <laughs> on YouTube is if you badmouth bananas, if you uh -huh. badmouth oatmeal, or if you badmouth whole wheat bread. Those three things, man, people people have a religious fervor when it comes to bananas, oatmeal, and, and whole grain breads. If you say anything negative about them, they're like, how dare you? What are you talking about? But Dennis actually has a video. He ate two candy bars in one setting. <clears throat> then in the next setting, he ate two all natural, <clears throat> no sugar added bananas. And the banana spiked his blood sugar higher than the two candy bars. And I'll tell you the reason that happened is because the fat in the candy bar and the right. protein in the candy bar kind of tempered the blood sugar spike. It doesn't make candy bars good for you. But also so many people blindly believe that bananas grow on a tree. Therefore, God made them. Therefore, they're good for you. But if you're a type 2 diabetic, there are too many carbohydrates in bananas. There are too many carbohydrates in green grapes. There are too many carbohydrates in oatmeal. And if you eat them, you will worsen your type 2 diabetes. And I love the test because you're just black and white. You're like, here's the glucometer. Here's the glucometer. This is what happened. I'm not a doctor, but this is what happened to me. And I think that's so powerful. Everyone out there can save up their money and they can buy a $30 or $40 glucometer. You don't need a prescription in the United States. I don't know about other countries, but you can buy one at any big box store. They have them in the pharmacy. Buy the cheapest one you can get, eat something and check your blood sugar 30 minutes after you eat it, an hour after you eat it, two hours after you eat it. And that will give you the definitive answer as to whether for your personal biochemistry, your personal physiology, should you eat bananas or not? And if you don't, don't believe me. Don't believe Dennis. Believe Mike the glucometer. That's who you, Mike the meter. That's who you need to listen to because the, the glucometer won't lie to you. It doesn't have a dog in the race. It doesn't have any investments in stocks or stock options. It just tells you the black and white truth. Uh, Dennis, when you first started making these YouTube videos, were you uncomfortable talking about diabetes? Did you feel like you were, uh, you know, the, that you were at the at the wrong rodeo or you were trying to step into a position that you didn't, you shouldn't be in. To, uh, I want people to really understand your lack of education. That's very important because people got to understand you do not have to be a doctor. Right. Help your friend reverse their type two diabetes. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I knew that this was a little unusual for me to be giving uh, anything, even hinting toward medical advice. And I, I, I like to say I don't do it. Uh, but of course, when I share what's happened with me, I'm sort of implying, you know what, this might be the case for you. In fact, in my own mind, I'm pretty much aware that it almost certainly will be for most diabetics. Uh, so I kind of live with a little bit of nervousness about that whole process, but yet I, I see so many, uh, testimonies coming back in. I mean, we, we feature a lot of people on the, on the YouTube channel where they're sharing their story and I get testimonies almost every single day of people. My glucose, my A1C was 11. Now it's 5.5 or whatever. Uh, just so many. Uh, it, it clearly is working. And, and this is just sort of a, a, like you say, it's a layman's declaration. Here's what seems to work. And 
one of the words I use in some of my videos, Ken, is pragmatic. I, I'm kind of a pragmatic guy. I like things that work. I don't like things that don't work. And one of the great tragedies in the field of diabetes is we, particularly in America, but really in many places, have clung to an outdated, outworn, never did work philosophy about yep. how to take care of diabetes. It has never worked. It never will work which is if you just switch from brown bread, whole wheat bread to white bread, go from white uh, white rice to brown rice, uh, don't eat white potatoes, eat sweet potatoes and everything will be fine. Well, and then make sure and take your metformin and if you need to take your insulin. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. It, it just simply flat doesn't work. What you and I and a bunch of others are saying does work. And really one of the things I do, and I tell people this, I'm just another voice saying amen to guys like Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Jason Fong, Dr. Richard Bernstein. Uh, it, some people might say, well, you're not a doctor. I'm going to go with what the doctors say. But guess what? The doctors themselves don't agree. you got one group saying it's vegan. you got one group saying it's low carb. you got one group saying we don't even know what it is, but you know, try to eat a little healthier. Uh, I'm just saying things that Dr. Ken Berry is saying, Dr. Jason Fong, Dr. Richard Bernstein, Dr. Sten Eckberg, and some of these guys. Uh, hey, my, I'm just saying, amen. I believe it. I've seen it work in my own life and I've read the book. You know, one of the things uh, anybody can easily see that the, the low carb or the, the keto or the carnivore diet is going to take care of your glucose problems almost for sure. Unless you're a type one and you, you need some extra insulin or you're a lot of, it's going to take care of that almost 99% or more. Uh, the, the only real question is, okay, yeah, but am I going to get my all my arteries and veins all clogged up from all the, the I'm going to eat more meat this way? Because you got to eat something. If you're going to cut out the carbs, chances are you're going to go with the meat or you're just going to be a very limited diet. And that I had no answer for at the first. I just knew it worked for me to keep my glucose down. But as I did some reading and started reading guys like uh, Jason Fung and Gary Tops and some of these guys, I realized there is strong science. It says not only will a low carb or a keto diet bring your glucose down, it'll actually be good for you in every way. And that most of the heart problems that we assume was because of saturated fat uh, are not that at all. And uh, the reality is that you have an excellent chance of living to be a, a, an old man, an old woman by going to a, a low carb diet and not creating all that inflammation. 100 percent i totally agree and and so everyone listening think about this obviously modern medicine got it wrong about type 2 diabetes because the the the, the little handout they give you from the american diabetes association you can follow that until the cows come home you're not going to reverse your type 2 diabetes you can you can follow the vegan gurus and you can eat all the raw uh vegetables you want to you're not going to reverse your type 2 diabetes it is not going to happen but when you start eating a diet that's rich in fatty meat and eggs, plus or minus some veg and berries, if you want it, you're going to reverse your type 2 diabetes. It's just that simple. But your doctor will tell you stupid things like stop eating white bread, eat brown bread. Uh, Dennis has got a video about that. The, it, maybe the brown bed, bread is a little bit less bad than white bread, but it does that does not make it good. Your doctor will say, oh, stop eating uh, regular Irish potatoes, eat sweet potatoes. Uh, that's not going to work. It, it might be a little less bad, but it does not make it good. And that goes on and on and on and on. And just how medical science and modern medicine got it wrong about type 2 diabetes, they also got it wrong about what causes heart disease. It's not high cholesterol. It's not eating a diet rich in saturated fat. It's not eating a diet rich in cholesterol. That does not contribute to heart disease. What contributes to heart disease is having chronically elevated levels of blood sugar or huge blood sugar spikes all day, every day, and chronically elevated levels of insulin and chronically level, elevated levels of inappropriate inflammation in your body. When you've got all those things, you can have a very low total cholesterol and still have a big fat heart attack. And, and indeed, doctors see this every day in the emergency room. Somebody comes in with a massive heart attack. They check their cholesterol. Their cholesterol and LDL, they're beautiful. And they're like, well, I, I mean, it must be just an anomaly. I don't know why this person had a heart attack. It's because high cholesterol doesn't cause heart attacks. High sugar, high insulin, high inflammation. That's what causes it. What advice would you give, Dennis, to someone who feels called, much like you did and much like I did? I feel called. I've, I have reversed my type 2 diabetes. I've lost a ton of weight. I feel so much better. I feel like that I should be 
teaching other people to do this, but I'm just a fill in the blank. I'm just a guy. I'm just a gal. I'm nobody special. Help these people understand you absolutely can and you should reach out because there are millions of people suffering right now from the from the devastation of, of type 2 diabetes that's uncontrolled. They need your help. Your neighbor needs your help. Your family member who maybe you haven't talked to in a few years, they need your help. Help these people understand, Dennis, what should they do? Well, how can they get started? How can they justify in their mind actually pretending to be some kind of knowledgeable person about type 2 diabetes? <laughs> Well, if well, they have uh, an experience of beating it themselves, they have an excellent uh, starting point right there. My dad used to say, the man who has an experience is never at the mercy of the man who has only an argument. And some of these people have some great theories, but they have no experience with it. I have the experience. I was My, my mom was diabetic. She lost both of her legs. She was in and out of the hospital for about the last 15 years of her life. And I, when it came after me, I knew I was headed the same exact direction. And so I have an experience. Now, if, if you have an experience with that, then share it. Do what you can. Share it. Share good books and turn people on to good uh, videos to watch, Facebook groups. There's just all kinds of resources. That, that's the good news. You know, when I first had my problems, that was 2001. And I finally saw some answers in 2002. There was no Facebook. There weren't nearly so many people talking about these things back in those days. Today, it's getting out. I don't think you can uh, take that cat and put it back in the bag. I think this is going to get bigger and bigger. The day will come. It. I won't live to see it, but the day will come when it will be standard understanding and practice of doctors to put diabetics on low-carb diets yep. immediately. Yep. Uh, because it just flat works. It works like nothing else works. It works fast. It works powerfully. And it is a, a diet for a lifetime. So if, if you're wanting to share that with people, then by all means, do what you can. Give them a book. Tell them about videos. Share your own experience. Just open your mouth and say some things. And you might be surprised. One thing about diabetics, they have a motivation others don't. When it comes to people wanting to lose weight, they will flit from one diet to the next diet to the next diet, from one doctor to this doctor and, and one plan to that plan. But diabetics are so desperate that if they find something that even seems like it might work, they'll give it a try. And if it works, they'll stay with it. And I think we, we see very little of uh, what I would call backsliding among people that really see victory in their lives. They are so thrilled. They're telling people they're living it and they're they're definite the rest of my life. I'm going to I'm going to eat like this. I'm going to live like this. No, oh, I totally agree. And I also agree with you, Dennis. I think in 20 years, the American Diabetes Association, their, their number one recommendation when you become pre, pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetic will be to immediately go on a low-carb diet. That's 100% what's going to happen. Right now, uh, they do offer a low-carb option, but it's on page 187 <laughs> in their book. And so, you know, it's way back close to the appendix. So nobody reads that. People are going to read the first part of the book, which is all about plant-based. Eat lots of whole grains, have fruit smoothies, eat lots of fruits and veg. That's what the that's what people hear from the American Diabetes Association. But my point, the reason I started this YouTube channel, because my beautiful wife told me, you need to shut up and start a YouTube channel because people out there need your help. And I did that. I listened to my wife like any smart husband does, right? That's right. And so I started this channel because people don't have 20 years to wait. If we wait 20 years for the ADA to get their butt in gear, how many grandfathers and grandmothers are we going to lose? Yeah. How many aunts and uncles will no longer be here with us? Or even worse, we'll be in the nursing home with an amputation and kidney failure and dementia. That did not have to happen. How many brothers and sisters will we lose in 20 years if we all just sit back and be silent and wait for the experts to tell us what to do until they finally get their act together and get it right. How many loved ones and family members have to die, have to be crippled, have to be just medically castrated before we say, okay, I guess I need to stand up like Dennis and Dr. Barry. I need to, I need to start a Facebook page. I need to start an Instagram account. I need to start a YouTube channel. And, and if nothing else, just share your journey because that's, as you know, Dennis, that's super powerful. When yeah. someone shares their story, shares their journey, because De Dennis says very plainly, I'm not giving medical advice. I'm just showing you what happened to me, what these two bananas did to me. 
And they might do that to you too. And, and how many people, I wonder, I'd love to know how many people went out and bought a glucometer thinking this Dennis Pollock guy, he's nuts. I'm going to prove him wrong. I'm going to go get a glucometer and two bananas and two candy bars. And then they actually did it. And they were like, holy crap. He was right. But now I, I get that yeah. all the time. People will send me comments saying, you know, I wanted to repeat your test. So I, I did the same thing. And about 90 percent of the time they'll say, and I got almost the exact same results. Yep. So I'm not a freak. Uh, what, what's happened with me is pretty much what's going to happen with most uh, diabetics, I think. Absolutely. It's physiology, Dennis. It's not magic. It's human physiology. When we are by design, low carbohydrate mammals, that's what we are. And when you feed us too many carbohydrates, bad things happen. Some of us develop hyperinsulinemia and hypoglycemia. Some of us develop prediabetes, some type 2 diabetes, some eczema, psoriasis, some joint pain, some gut issues. We are not designed by the creator to eat a high carbohydrate diet full of sugar and full of grains and highly processed junk food. We are not designed to eat that. And when you put that kind of junk into your temple, bad things are going to happen every single time. And it may not be outwardly apparent that bad things are happening, but I can promise you knowing the human physiology, like I do, bad things are happening, whether you can tell it yet or not. Dennis, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for this. Tell people again the title of your book, where they can get it. Tell them about your YouTube channel and any final words of inspiration you can give. Yeah, yeah. well, the YouTube channel they can find easily enough. But type in the words "beat diabetes" and if you maybe my name Dennis, and you will definitely see all kinds of videos that I've done. Uh, I've written actually three books. The the biggest seller is called 60 Ways to Lower Your Blood Sugar and just give little tips uh, about the ways to change your diet mostly. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a, and, and then I, I think I showed you, I have uh, a couple of uh, uh, collections of videos where I, I thought, you know, one of the things that really touches me, Ken, is uh, just how desperate people get when, they, especially when they first are diagnosed and it scares them to death, which is reasonable. It's, you yep. know, if a bear comes at you in the woods, you'd be scared and you'd have a right to be scared. And when diabetes comes at you, you have a right to be scared. But the good news is there are things you can do. You can see victory. That that monster has a soft underbelly. And if you punch him in the right place, he'll go down. And I've seen that in my life and so many others have as well. Yep. I love it, Dennis. Thank you so much for this. And everybody watching, do not be afraid to share your story. Number one, fix your own health. Number two, lead by quiet example. Number three, when the time comes, and you'll know it because very often people will reach out to you and ask you, how did you do this? Then it's time to teach. Or you can always start a social media channel and just start posting your glucometer video. Say, oh man, I ate, I ate a, a handful of green grapes that my, my nutritionist told me to eat. This is what it did to my blood sugar. I ate a bowl of beautiful steaming uh, steel cut oats, not those instant oats, but the real kind that you got to cook on the stove for three days. I ate them. And an hour later, this is what my blood sugar was. When you start posting content like that, you're going to reach people who need your help. Please don't depend on me. Definitely don't depend on the American Diabetes Association. They might get on board with Dennis and I in 20 years or so, but also don't depend on me to spread this. Don't depend on Dennis to do all this. We need your help too. We need you to subscribe to our channels. We need you to share our videos. We need to also, more importantly, share your story with your friends and family. My A1C used to be 10. Now it's 5.5. I can show you how to do it too. We need all of us. There, there are some big Goliaths in this world, Dennis, and there needs that we need a lot of Davids fighting this fight so that we can ultimately win and all have the good health that we all deserve. That's exactly right. All right, Dennis. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks, guys, for watching this. You're As always, you're welcome to share this on your social media. Subscribe to Dennis's channel. Maybe get one of his books. But more than anything, share your story. Thank you, Dennis, for doing this. See you guys next time.